I can say that for my entire life I've been fascinated with Tibet, a place that is so high and so so far from anything relative to what I've experienced here in the United States. So that's an interest I've had from a, being a very, very young child. I've bought new jackets since I came back, if that's any, <laughs> any sign of how cold it was while I was there. That being said, it was a, it was beautiful in ways that are that are hard to describe. The plateau itself is beautiful in its desolation. It is incredible to go to a place where you can really look out and just see forever. Runoff is a very, very complicated issue. You're going to be dealing with what type of soil are you on? How dense is that soil? What angle is that, slow, is that specific slope at? And you have all of these different issues that compound. But the one thing that's fairly constant throughout them is the infiltration rate of water, right? We talk about how fast the water is absorbed. So what we've done is we focused on infiltration rates, the one thing that we can measure everywhere, no matter what. And the way that we're doing that is with what we call a double ring infiltrometer and a couple of Mariette tubes, which are basically, it's basically two large steel rings that we drive into the ground, have, some wa have water sitting in it at a constant uh, level, and we measure how much water is, getting, is going to the ground per minute. And that way we try to compare apples to apples and control for all the different extraneous things that we just, you can't get your hands around even if you want to. We were near our Genshin field station and we were attempting to do some mapping for Andrew's other project. Now I hear from Rich that, they're, that they'd noticed a yak trapped in the prayer flags or on the way up. So we turned around and we walked down this hill and there it was, a, one of the biggest bull yak that I saw in the entire summer, trapped just completely inside these prayer flags, this large display of prayer flags. The Tibetans don't only use string to put up their prayer flags, but they also use wires to make the prayer flags stay up there more permanently so you're not up there it's pretty windy and cold. You don't want to be up there putting up prayer flags every single weekend. So Rich whipped out his Leatherman, and I grabbed my camera, and Pemba Bomb and all, and all three of us dove into this yak and tried to get it untangled from these prayer flags. It took us quite a while. We, we probably spent 30, 40 minutes, and the yak was not very pleased with us for grabbing onto its horns and trying to contort it while you're trying to clip off the um, the prayer flags. And the, the ironic thing about it is, is we, we had been... Uh, kind of cursing the, who, who would let their yak up in the prayer flags? What kind of person would do this? And we get down to the very bottom and the, the pastor always thanks us for saving his yak.